Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to Let's Play Final Fantasy IX. We have nothing but this soothing, calming, tranquil train ride to Trino. Oh yeah, of course, Queen Braun would never start a war. Never, 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 never. It's all a misunderstanding, Steiner. Push those gloomy thoughts away and enjoy this blissful little train ride through the bucolic countryside of Alexandria. It's not like we just finished Disc 1, which saw the invasion and eradication of an entire kingdom. Now, let's push those nasty thoughts away and enjoy the beginning of Disc 2 of FF9. <laughs> yeah, we're home. We can gaze out at these beautiful vistas of the Alexandrian countryside while Garnet and Steiner make their way to the castle to clear up this whole nasty misunderstanding about the genocide of the Burmesian people at the hands of the coward Queen Bron. Oh, and we can't forget Beatrix. Or Kuja. Kuja with the best theme in the game. The Darkness of Eternity. Uh, or Zorn and Thorn. Can't leave any of them out. Everybody's complicit. <laughs> and by now, you probably noticed that even though the story is different, these little story beats that the game is hitting are very similar to those, uh, uh some of those of FF6. I have to get faster doing these menus. Um, you can see a lot of parallels here, right? You can see the easy parallel from uh, Queen Braun to Emperor Gestal. You can see the parallels between Kefka and Kuja, even though we don't know that much about Kuja yet. Um, we know that he's not as flamboyant as Kefka. We know he's not quite as for lack of a better term, mad as, as Kefka. But in his station, in his position relative to the queen, he kind of mirrors uh, Kefka's position to Emperor Gestal. The sort of this uh, right hand, powerful mage figure. And then we have the obvious parallel of Beatrix to Leo. Again, you can kind of infer a lot just by how everyone is positioned uh, in relation to each other. We know quite a bit about Queen Braun, know a lot less about Beatrix and Kuja, but we know and we can infer things. We can draw these parallels and inferences uh, based on what we know about FF6 and the lineage of Final Fantasy and how much FF9 pays homage to its heritage. So you can kind of see maybe where some of these character arcs are leading, or at least you can infer, you can you can maybe make some educated guesses about Kuja and about Beatrix and about Queen Braun. Plus, you can just see it in the you can you can feel it in the winds. Uh, you can tell which way the wind is blowing as we enter uh, the beginning of Disc 2 as they get closer to Alexandria as uh, Freya and Vivi and uh, Kina and Zidane recuperate after being absolutely trounced at the hands of Beatrix and just left in the rain uh, as, as Kuja goes and prepares a way to infiltrate the remaining Burmesians in Clara. There are a lot of strong 
inferences that we can draw. And they're made all the stronger based on what we know about FF6. Beatrix, by the way, was not originally planned to be in the game. Uh, it was just going to be Steiner heading up the Knights of Pluto. And they were going to be the solo Queen's Guard. And then Beatrix was introduced as sort of a rival to Steiner and a foil to him. Uh, and she became uh, this more important character in the story. She was given this position as um, the Queen's other right hand, if you will. Uh, the general, and I forget the group that she is captain of, uh, but they are not the Knights of Pluto. Actually, no, am I wrong about this? Is she general of the Knights of Pluto? Does she just outrank Steiner? I, I don't actually recall that detail. I don't know if she's just general of the, of the Knights of Pluto, or if she's general of the army. Pretty sure it's the army that she is uh, leading. And the Knights of Pluto more act like the, the Royal Guard. But our train en route to Alexandria is now departing. We met up with Cinna and Marcus uh, from the, the Tantalus group. And we found out that Cinna is actually going back to... Or no, we are finding this out now. There we go. Cinna's going to the Tantalus hideout in Lindblom to spread the news that they've potentially found a cure for uh, Blank's petrification. Remember way back when, when we left Blank, uh, Blank was responsible for saving us, giving us the map to get out of the area as the forest was petrified, and Blank was petrified in it. So the Tantalus crew, they have not... Their, their priorities have not shifted. It's still all about rescuing Blank, and they found a way to maybe do that. Uh, an item called a Super Soft. Soft, of course, being the recurring Final Fantasy IX, or <laughs> the recurring Final Fantasy item that cures the petrification status ailment. So Super Soft would maybe cure Blank from his state of petrification within the Evil Forest, and might even unpetrify the forest itself. And that's where Marcus here enters the picture. Uh, Marcus is also heading to uh, a city within the Alexandrian territory called uh, Trino. And he is hoping that the Super Saw is there and that he can get it as thieves do, probably stealing it. Uh, in the meantime, something has stopped the train and that something is that Black Waltz 3. Judging from the way he's swaying and how he limped towards Garnet, it seems like he body blocked the shit out of that train. Which, goddamn, clearly the strongest of the Black Waltzes. And because of his weakened state, we actually have a pretty good shot against him. Also, we always have a thief with us. And that's... Oh, I... Hmm. How do I cure that? I have to do that with Steiner. We always have a thief with us. So we're gonna want to get him unfrozen. Is that just gonna do it? No, that is not sleep. I forgot this was a thing. Uh, am I gonna have to pop a remedy on him? Oh, no, he got unfrozen. Great. It's just a couple turns. He's getting weak. Oh, this is why I love having Garnet back, though. For these constant heals. Just, oh, as long as she's a heal bot, everything is cool. I'm gonna wind up not being able to steal shit, huh? I got, I think I got the steeple hat earlier, but that's like the least exciting thing I can possibly steal from him. He also is a lightning staff and a fire staff. Uh, we have one lightning staff already on Vivi. Can't hurt to have more than one. And then the fire staff would be nice too, because that will teach fire up. Level 2 fire. Hey, he's just having a good old time. 
taken 50% of Marcus's health at a time. And this is good. We really need a victory right now. Because... This one ends on a, a very dour note. It ends on utter defeat. So the fact that we now get to enjoy taking down a really strong enemy and doing it in a group that's far removed from everything that we went through last time, uh, it, it changes the context a lot, right? Gives the player and gives the character something to hope for. It's a nice, upbeat moment to start this new chapter off on. Yeah, we didn't get shit for good, uh, for good loot as far as, uh, stealing goes. Let's see what he drops. I suspect oh, just a bunch of bullshit. Actually, nothing. He literally dropped nothing except for 800 gil. Which is paltry. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, so Garnet does know about the Black Mages invading Burr. Oh, of course she does. But I, I think the information that's new is that they wiped this city out already. Yeah, she was there in uh, in Lindblom when they got the news about the invasion. Slipped my mind for a second. Oh god, we should never get close-ups of, of uh, Marcus's face. He's some kind of ogre. <laughs> What's wrong with your face? And Garnet, this is twice now, has really owned up to her part in uh, Blank's current status ailment. <laughs> and wants to help find the Super Soft. And to kind of pay him back. Uh, so from here, uh, on the left side, we can actually... Oh, no, here's where it says Lindbom. Yeah, Arab's Lindbom station. I think it also said it back at the, uh, at the lift before we got on the train. That is a bit harder to read, though. May have been conflating that with... Information that I knew was coming. Either way, yeah, that that's a spelling of Lindblom that appears often in the game. No amount of hardship can tear our two countries apart. 11th region of Lindblom, Sid the Eighth. The Berkmia cable cars were built to, com uh, to commemorate the 20th anniversary of friendship between Lindblom and Alexandria. If we take the left fork in this road, uh, that would actually lead back to Dolly. We can't get to Dolly because the gate's still locked, uh, but we could have also seen that from the other side. In fact, we could have also seen uh, the other side of the, uh, the the town right before Trino, I think. But not gotten in. This is why we have the gate pass, so we can get through here. And we're good to go. We're on our way. To an entirely separate zone in the Mist Continent. Uh, now we just have to venture out towards Trino. Which has a really compelling uh, theme. Much like how Hermesia was the city of eternal rain. And yeah, I don't feel too bad giving Marcus a couple of items here. Uh, this is mostly stuff that is getting close to obsolescence by this point. Except maybe the chain plate. Well, I'll still throw it on him. I can take it off any time. There is our first random encounter of Disc 2, and our first look at uh, this area's background art, which, mmm, this high noon background. I like that a lot. So I've been thinking a lot about uh, turn-based combat, or like ATD-based combat, and what the, the appeal is, and trying to kind of talk myself through and unravel and unpack that. And I think it comes down to 
for me, stress. And where the spikes are and how it's sustained. And first off, when I say stress, there are different types of stress, right? Uh, like, there's distress and eustress, which are negative and positive sides of the same coin. You generally don't want to be in distress, but eustress, uh, eustress is produced when we do something exciting or intense. Hope this is the spider. Cause that enemy's cool. Yeah. Uh, and it leads to to engagement and enjoyment. Uh, things that like demand your attention. They can lead to a, a flow state. And those stressors let you eventually feel like you accomplished something. Uh, distress is the opposite of all that. It's it's intense anxiety. So when I say stress. Um, I'm pretty much exclusively talking about you stress in this context. Uh, also, I'm walking past Trino, which is the town that we passed, go through the forest and hit a cave here. Oh, and suddenly now on disc two, the encounter rate is fine. Uh, before I head into the forest, we have a chance of randomly encountering a pretty dangerous enemy. So I'm going to save right outside of it. Uh, and the cave that we want to go into, just for a couple of goodies, is on the opposite side of the forest, in this little cul-de-sac. Oh, did we get it? Is this technically in the forest? So we're like a pixel out- no, good. Oh, this is a unique arena though. And some weird enemies that we haven't fought before. Okay, so I can start this thought back up now. Good, 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 good. Uh, I used to use... Is this the phone I was in the middle of? Oh, I hope so. Because I think I, I... Just before those two battles... Talked about you stress and distress, right? Uh, I hope so. Uh, I used this example once in explaining the difference in how it feels to be DPS versus how it feels to play a healer in an MMO like WoW. Uh, DPS, when you're in that role, it produces like a moderate amount of, of constant stress because you always have to be doing your rotation. You always have to be looking for the next target to burn down. You never really get a sustained period where you don't want to be hitting your Oh, this is Kwan's dwelling. So we didn't miss the little Easter egg that I want to point out. Cool, we'll get that in here. But there's never, like, even on trash mobs, you still want to be hitting your buttons. You still want to always be on. You know, you're always pushing to maximize DPS. Healing is more like peaks of really high stress, whereas DPS doesn't often get that. Uh, it's, it's high stress when things get hectic and when there's a lot of raid-wide damage or burst damage on the tank. Uh, by the way, that's another Stellatio coin we got. Uh, and it's divvied up between these periods of very low stress. So it's these ebbs and flows, these peaks and valleys. It's low stress and then suddenly high stress and then it falls back down. DPS is always kind of in that middle level of stress, but it's, it doesn't peak too high or, or drop too low, you know? This is that grandfather clock. Must have stopped, must stopped the week before I left Alexandria. Ah, I wonder if they changed that at some point. Usually when you examine this, Garnet remarks about uh, there being nothing behind there, which is that FF6 reference I was talking about before. Uh, and then there's also this to inspect, which is a little height chart. And that height chart is for Vivi, because remember, Quan is his adoptive... I think you called him grandfather, right? Yeah. Uh, but anyway, yeah, DPS is kind of constant mid-level stress. 
you know, it's not too stressful, but it's also not, you're never like just taking your eyes completely off the screen or, you know, taking a big deep breath and not doing anything. Healing is more like sometimes you have periods where you're just not casting. There's nothing to be healed. You're just regaining mana. You know, you're looking out for where the spikes are, but you also kind of learn the rhythm of the fight and you know when you don't need to be casting your big heals or you don't need to be really worried. And then there are those moments where you just get really spiky, stressful, things happening. Ebbs and flows. I think turn-based games uh, excel at maintaining that kind of a pace of creating spikes in stress for you to respond to and then easing you back down to like really low stress and that pacing makes it really easy at least to me uh, to play turn-based RPGs for really long periods of time like I can play this I can play Octopath Traveler even a, a an intentionally like exhausting game like Darkest Dungeon I can just sink hour after hour after hour into And that's not even to get into, like, the fact that RPGs are inherently designed as scanner boxes. They are designed with these kind of compulsion loops in mind to keep you playing. That's even taking that aside. This is just what I feel from the combat itself. And then, of course, you still always have to... to factor in like the broader context of pacing like within within the game as a whole there is not just combat pacing to an rpg there's story pacing there's the gameplay beats there's all this stuff that's working in concert to create the overall pace of the game but just talking about the pace of combat i think there that that ebb and flow that peak and valley model of turn-based strategy games is just mm, it's it's really, really smooth and calming. It's really nice to have that cool down and those peaks rather than kind of always being on. Always having that middle of the road baseline stress. You know, it's rhythmic. It's rhythmic. <laughs> I can sublimate into them more easily. I love that the deliberateness and the like the methodical nature of them too. You know, a bad action RPG or a mediocre action RPG is just eh. But like even uh, I don't uh, I don't know. It's it's I just really like turn based RPGs. There's a lot of appeal there. And when you kind of dismiss them outright as like, oh they're archaic, they're outdated. I think that is entirely fundamentally wrong. Hey, we did it. I believe that's 13 tosses of 10 gil apiece into the Trino Fountain. La Fontana di Trino. And we get the Gemini Stellatio coin. Uh, so that marks two now in a very short period. And Dagger's off getting pickpocketed. <laughs> so punished for being so sheltered for so long. And then suddenly walking alone in the city of eternal night. Uh, the dark city Trino. Trino kicks so much ass. We also get the Mithril Dagger there. It's not a bad pickup. Uh, so we find out this the door to this tower uh, for the time being is locked. And so we have nothing else to do but find other routes around the city. This one, at first glance, is a little bit more complicated in layout uh, compared to that of Lindblom. Uh, but Lindblom actually feels like the bigger city. All the screens here are just connected in a sort of roundabout way, but you find your way around uh, pretty easily. 
uh, and pretty fast. My wife, she died three years ago. Uh, and before we leave, or before we end this episode off, I should say, we will be getting one more Stellatio coin, and we'll be getting that right now. Uh, Steiner's going to climb the ladder down here to the market. Oh, we got a Yeti Tetra Master car. Oh, we're finally going to play some Tetra Master at some point in the near future, hopefully. Trino is a city that really rewards playing the card game. Uh, because you get Stellatio coins from the nobles here. And also you get a Stellatio coin from that obscure corner. <laughs> That's so many. Uh, and that's because the city is actually a really big, uh, commerce hub for the Stellatio coins. In fact, it's where we are going to turn the coins in, finally, and start getting rewards. And kind of every time we, uh, switch screens now, we're gonna get a different active time event following either Garnet or, uh, Marcus. Marcus is heading to... The uh, Tantalus hideout here in Trino, where we meet back up with Baku. Yeah, so it's in a noble's mansion. They're going to take a boat to it and then uh, just take what they need. And you can guess where that noble's mansion is based on the only locked door that we came across so far. Uh, before we go to save at uh, the Moogle, we're going to change screens one more time just so we get to see this last, this last active time event, which is the Trino Auction. Uh, and the Trino Auction will actually be a thing later on. And we spot Kuja here up in the balcony watching the auction take place. Uh, we'll be able to participate in the auction in a bit. Oh, we also have the card stadium here. That's why Tetra Master is a thing in this, uh, in this city. It's a salt you with Stellatio coins, man. Get a bunch of them by playing. And I'll do my shopping off screen so you don't have to see all that again. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one.